Greg Tech uh, came up you know, a few times. So uh, my objective for this uh, keynote will be to really uh, explain you which has been the journey in RegTech over the last three years. I want to see a few use cases and I want to drill down on uh, three, four companies which I think are very good companies in the space. And uh, I also want to have um, a sizing of the market potential for RegTech companies, which is ultimately the reason why uh, you know, these companies have been, have been founded heavily in the last couple of years. Uh, so, just to give you a bit of background of um, our journey in fintech, uh, so we started in 1994 uh, with filing you know, the first uh, patent for mobile payments. We then we work on, on, on Verizon uh, on the first um, joint venture from, for mobile payments, what you today call uh, Apple Pay or Samsung Pay. Then we shifted on a conference side uh, called Money 2020, and uh, over the last three years, in which we've been actually involved, uh, it's been the launch of uh, Let's Talk Payments, which was a website for FinTech Insights, and now we have <coughs> a market network for FinTech called uh, Medici. Now, um, the first time I uh, heard the word uh, RegTech was actually in mid-2015. Few of our uh, financial institution partners and uh, consulting companies called us, say, hey, you know what? The compliance costs are going high, uh, they're growing a lot. There is over-regulation, there is a lot of complexity in the regulatory side and say, okay, oh, let's, let, let's discuss, right? So we look at the numbers, and uh, as you can see, pre-crisis, so this is the compliance cost as percentage of operating cost for banks. So before crisis, it was about two, two, two and a half percent, depending on the business line of the bank. After it went up to 4.5%, 4, 4, 4 which is uh, a big increase. Then we started receiving calls from investors saying there is a huge opportunity here, right? The market is growing. And, uh, and uh, that's why we classify your know, RegTech as a FinTech vertical. Now, the, the next step is to um, understand why RegTech became so relevant. And many people think RegTech is just technolo technology applied to compliance, but this is not true. And I'll tell you why. So after the financial crisis, uh, many things happened, like $22, $22 trillion erased in economic value, 20, 27 million people were unemployed. So basically the regulator was applied to step in. They wanted to put some regulation. They wanted to make sure they could protect uh, the consumers from uh, similar issues as they saw before. That's why they increased the capital requirements for banks, right? Uh, the banks were taking less risks uh, and uh, um, the compliance costs were increasing because the number of regulation rolling out was huge. The effect of this was a, a decrease in, uh, in the return on equity for banks. Before the crisis was about 15% in uh, developing countries, and after it was between 8 and 10%. Now the effect is that this only uh, this actually changed the business model of banks. Not, all, not, not the business, but the business model. Because the way they were operating radically changed. And this is the sweet spot of rec tech companies. So rec tech companies, my definition, they support banks in adapting their business model in a fast-pacing environment. They're not technology provider like SAP or, or others. Now, if we say that this is an opportunity for the companies, uh, how, can we, um, how can we size the opportunity? So we made some numbers, we crunched some numbers, and, and we said, okay, in 2015, um, financial service, global, global uh, GRC spending, so global, um, governance, risk, and compliance, was 78 billion, and 32% uh, was invested in technology. Our projection for 2020 is 118 billion and 54% spent in technology. Now, if you also add uh, to this number uh, the fines that banks have been paying, which is you know 45 fold between uh, 2010 and 2014, then we can estimate that direct market potential is about 100 billion dollars. Boom. We have 217 companies in RegTech, which, when which when were founded uh, in the last three years. So that's an impressive number. And they raised about uh, $3.5 billion. Um, then we have asked the financial institution on which area they are actually spending most of the GRC. And uh, these are the use cases. So risk management, compliance, audit management, and automated controls, which ultimately become the um, main use cases in RegTech. 
Not the only use cases, but the main one. And for each vertical, um, uh, you know, I wanted to show a few big companies according to us. Uh, now, leaving the boring stuff, uh, I think the next step will be really to drill down on the use cases, but also to understand why a reg tech company <coughs> can gain advantage in comparison to, to a tech company. And uh, these are uh, the reasons in, in our opinion. First of all, a reg tech company, uh, respect to a pure technology company, will offer a much better um, customer experience on the onboarding process, on the, on the, uh, on the um, uh, digital experience. Right? Even if when you sign up for a new service, uh, you don't want to send your documents for verification, you want to have the verification instantly. Uh, second, uh, financial inclusion. And I, I will be talking in, in some time about the use case of a company in RegTech also using blockchain called BankQ. Then we have better KYC, which goes into the customer experience. We have uh, increasing profitability because you don't want to spend too much on compliance. Uh, scalability of the service, most of the tech companies and products are run on cloud, so they are perfectly scalable and they are you know, uh, much easier to adapt. Advanced analytics and better reporting. Now uh, the boring stuff has finished, right? Uh, so we can go on the use cases. First company in the KYC, AML, and anti-fraud is Trulio. And we have analyzed pretty much every company in the space. We really think this company is great. So what they've done starting from 2011, which is, you know, I would say the first company in Rectic, uh, they, they, can, they can verify 2,500 different types of documents. Uh, they do things very quickly, and uh, uh, they operate in anti five counters, which is, uh, which is good. Second company, BankQ, digital identity. When I, when I said before that um, RegTech will enable financial inclusion, it's true. Because now, government will recognize <coughs> as proof of identity either a document released by the document, or they will be looking at your uh, financial transactions in financial history. This company is doing something different because they say, oh, in the world there are so many unbanked people. 60% of these people, they, they have a mobile phone. So how can we use blockchain for recording transactions starting from <coughs> that element? And uh, you know, the founder is, is doing a great job in Africa, but also in, uh, in, uh, in, many, count in many other countries in emerging economies. Um, third use case. A company called Exenica, uh, specific for um, reporting and compliance. Now, the, diff the difficult thing when you think about um, reporting is basically that you need to collect data and the, you need to create the linkages between data. And you need to do, to do that in a uh, periodic fashion. Because if there are updates on the regulations, you need to make sure you, you can record all these changes. Uh, very good company using great technology. Similar one is also Suade. Uh, that solves exactly the same issue. Data, data linkage, data collection. Last use case uh, for today is Algodynamics, which is a proof that many tech companies are really using advanced analytics in a much better way than um, other technology providers. So this, this company uh, is selling their product to um, family offices, but also to investment managers, and they can predict with some days or weeks in advance, you know, major shift in the, in the market. And they don't need historical data, and they don't need uh, um, you know, to, 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 re to record you know, previous disrupting events. So I think these are the relevant use cases. Um, I want to just give you a brief overview of the direct space. How big is that? Which are the players and the use cases? Uh, thank you.